welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, and I am looking forward to this puzzle today because uh, Marvin Kanhauser almost never disappoints, and uh, I haven't done a puzzle by him for some time, so we'll get to that in a minute. Now, what's going on Patreon? We've got two things recently. One is the um, bonus pack of puzzles from the Paint by Numbers Institute, which is going to be November's monthly reward in about a week's time. So that full reward pack, which includes 50 puzzles, some of them very easy, so don't panic about that, um, and they get gradually get harder. All of, I think in the Japanese some style and giving pictures, um, or certainly some of them, I don't exactly know. Um, and that by Panthera and the Asylum. That's coming up in a week, but the bonus pack is out there on Patreon already, actually free. Um, what's not free is a video I put up today for the $2 Patreons of me looking at the end game of a recent listener crossword. It's, well, I mean, it's really interesting. If you have any interest in how advanced thematic crosswords sometimes unwind in the end, this one's really good. Uh, and that's why I did a video on it. So, that's on Patreon. We have all our apps. They're all on the links under the video um, in on the three platforms, thanks to Esteban, etc. all the people who helped at Google as well, which was kind. Um, and also there's Sudoku Pad that's there and has been there for a month or two now, and uh, lots of other content on Discord and, of course, on Patreon. So do check out the links under the video at some point now. What about this puzzle? This is called the X Sudoku. We've seen lots of Sudokus with a kind of X theme. Um, and sometimes X Sudoku means with a diagonal constraint, but that's not what's going on here. Instead, we've got this kind of wibbly X in the grid made up of uh, thermos and palindromes. So we have uh, normal Sudoku rules. We have thermometers along which Digits must increase from the bulb to the end. We have palindromes, which read the same forwards and backwards. They're the purple lines. Um, so those two cells must be the same, and those two on that palindrome. And we have these, um, what are they called? Quadruples rules, where if a number appears in a circle, it must be in at least one of the surrounding cells. So seven here must be in one of those four cells. In this case, there can only be one seven in because those four cells are all different. But in this case, we could have two different twos in that cell, in that region that I've just highlighted. So, but there must be at least one, that's the point. So those are the rules. Do give it a try on the link under the video. The first one, um, as I say, being by Marvin, I think it'll be entertaining. And we shall see. Let's get cracking and find out. Okay, so we've got one given digit, very kind of you, Marvin, um, but that does allow me to kind of good lift this thermo. That must be six, seven, or eight, and that's seven, eight, or nine. Now let's use this one clue. There must be a one in one of those two cells because it can't be there, and that's on the palindrome in one of these two cells, so there's a one in one of those. Now those are looking across at this one quadruple clue, and saying there must be a one in one of those two cells. I'm going to be have to. I'm going to have to be a little careful about my corner marking. Oh, excuse me. Right, sorry about that. Now I was just saying I have to be careful with these corner marks because those ones represent where one is. Well, first of all, around that one, but therefore where one is in row three, but they're not confining it within this box. So, oh, they are keeping it off that thermo bulb. I don't know, that might become interesting. Um, hmm, what else does that do? I'm not sure. Right, where else have we got something? Oh, I tell you what, yes, if they're keeping it off that thermo bulb, that is good because now two can't be in those cells. It could never have been there because that's the third cell on a thermo. But now it can't be there because one would have to be on the bulb for two to be there. So two's not in those cells, but this two clue means it's in one of those. But that doesn't reach down and hit that. Oh no, it's on the third, it's on the palindrome. Ah, it does hit that. 
So two goes on to one of those two cells on the palindrome, and therefore, yes, now it does hit this two by two, and again, I'm going to be pencil marking across boxes. So I'm going to have to be careful about the meaning of that. We get a two in one of those cells, but this, it doesn't quite have the same effect on this three. Oh, look, look at, we get, I'm just noticing we get a one, a two, a three, and a four in the corners. Also on these corners, I'm sure this is very deliberate. Um, but what does it mean for me? Ah, yes, where does one go in this box now? Ah, okay, I was saying that this one pair didn't constrain this box, but interestingly, it does a bit, I think. Yes, it means that one is not in those two cells, because for row three, one is in one of those two, so it can't be there. One can't be here and never could have been on the, palin on the thermo. It now can't be here on the palindrome, because of this palindrome in box five, there's a one in box five in one of those two positions, so there can't be one there. So now one must be in one of these, or not one of these three. It can't be there because of where we've got one penciled in box one. So if you followed all that, it means one of these two cells contains a one. And this, this corner mark's now doing double duty between that and that. But what is really interesting about this Yes, look, those ones are looking down the rest of the column and saying you can't have a one anywhere there. Now that means these aren't ones. These aren't ones because they're on the palindrome and not on the bulb. These aren't ones because they're the same as these two. And again, one has been used up in the central circle. So now one is confined to those two cells in box nine. And I don't think this would have worked unless we'd done the two thing first. So that's quite, well, it's very clever. Oh, look, this is going to do the same again. Right. Those three can't be ones because of the pencil mark. One's in box nine. Those two because of the thermo. And these two again because of the palindrome. This is why all these palindromes snake into the central box. So now one is in one of those two cells in box seven. I'm not sure if we can carry this on, but I bet we can somehow. Yes, look, the twos are stopping this being a two and it can't be a one because one's confined there. And this is gonna work on threes. So three, this must be at least three. These can't be three on the thermo. And yet three is in this four cell group because of the circle three. So we get three in one of those. Look at this. We're going to get three on this palindrome thing. That stops three being in either of those cells or indeed that cell. Three around this quadruple clue must be in one of those two. Again, pencil marking across a box. Oh, but I was expecting to rule four now out of those, but that could be a two, couldn't it? Oh, has the symmetry stopped rotating? My mind is in a world, just like this puzzle. Um, right, three can't be in those cells or in those or in these, therefore. But if this is a two, this could be a three and that could be a four. So ah, I've run out of steam a bit. Um, I'm sure this is the way we're being led through this, though. So I do want to try and keep going if I can. Now, what about twos? We had a two there. Ah, we've ruled these positions for two. Rule two out of those places. Those can't be two because of the thermo. Yes, here we go. Those can't be two because of the palindrome and the fact that two is confined to those cells. So two in this cage, 
in this box, it's exactly the same as up here where one had to be in one of those. Two now has to be in one of those cells. All of those are ruled out from being a two. These can't be a two because the bulb can't be a one. These can't be a two because the two's in the central box are there and can't be there. So this has now become a one-two pair. This is so clever. And this does it for the fours as well, doesn't it? If this now can't be one or two because they're in those positions in the box, it can't be three because they're in one of those positions in the row. So the smallest this can be is four, and that means these can't be four, but they must appear in this group of four cells. So there is a four on the palindrome. There is a four there. This is so elegant. Um, look, there has to be a four around here. We now know it can't be in those two because there's one there. So we put four in one of those cells. And now, yes, yet again, four can't be there. Four can't be there. Four can't be on the palindrome because we know in the central box it's in one of those two. So it can't be in one of those two. So again, four is in one of those two cells. But surely we're going to run out of being able to use that across the grid again now. If those can't be four, which is what we've just learnt. Um, does that help? Yes, maybe it does. Those can't be four because four is in one of those. So those can't be four. Four, but this looks like it can be a three so four could still be well it could be it could be there oh come on think about it um is this one two pair yes where does two go in box one it's got to be on the two quadruple clue so it's in one of those two cells Ah, but it cannot be on the palindrome there because two is done, right, in the central box. So we've placed a two. That's our first full digit in the grid, not the one I was expecting at this point. Um, I'm not sure if it really helps. Uh, we get a two in one of those three. Are we not resolved on the ones? I don't think we are. We've got this weird one, two, three, four chain around the middle. We've got a similar one, two, three, four chain in the fifth Stimmerfell ring. That one, two pair, what's that doing for me? Ah, eight. This eight can't be in the circle, in the bulb, because you'd need two numbers bigger than eight on the thermo. I don't know, eight is in one of those two cells, but that doesn't feel as helpful. This one doesn't echo, and that one does there, but it's not very constrained. Right, I'm missing something. Okay, we now know this can't be one or two. Actually, it's better, oh no, look, it's really good here. This can't be one, two, three, or four. Ah, so we're getting pretty close to, well, we're certainly good lifting it now. Five, six, or seven there. It can't be one, two, three, or four, because of a one, two pair there. Three is in one of those two positions in row seven. So that can't be three, and four is down here. So that's five, six, or seven. This is, well, I was going to say six, seven, or eight, but it can't be eight, because eight in the box is over here. So that is seven or nine. This can't be seven now. And we're down to two possible cells, two possible candidates for each cell, which ought to be helpful. But I'm not quite seeing why. What about over here? This can't be one, two, or three. So that is four, five, six or seven. This can only be five, six or eight. Remember we've got a seven here. So that is six, seven or nine and that doesn't feel quite as useful. And up here this could still be a three. Unless I'm missing something. I 
think I am missing something. What am I missing? Um, ones. That one two pair, that feels like the most concrete thing we've achieved somehow. Even though we put a two there as a result. Then two, okay, let's have a look at twos. Twos are in a number of places here. Doesn't feel all that useful because it ends up in these arid zones of boxes two and eight, which have so few clues in. Um, is this used? Does this get resolved in some way? Five, six, six, seven, ooh, seven, nine. Why have I I've put the wrong digit in here? This is not six, seven, or nine, it's six, eight, or nine but that's not helping to form a quad or anything. Um, maybe it is these thermos now. Maybe we have to move our attention over to them. Or seven being, no, six being in this area. I don't know, that doesn't feel good. Let's just pencil mark this just for the pure heck of it. Uh, four, five, seven or eight. Can't be a six in this box. That can't be a five or a six. I don't know. There's, it's something with the small digits. I'm missing something with the small digits. I've got this one, two pair. Three somewhere here. We've got four and one of those. Figure it out. Maybe it's to do with the palindromes. If that was a one and that was a one, do we get some sort of problem? We end up with a one there. Not really. I don't see why that's a problem anywhere. Twos, threes. Ah. Oh. Yes. Where does three go in this box? This might work for another digit, but I think it definitely works for threes. Right. We've ruled out three for all of those places. Three can't be on this end of that palindrome because of where three is in the central box, so it's not there either. And it also can't be here because there is a pair of threes in row seven looking at that cell. So actually, the only place for three in box nine is there. Now, is that sort of thing going to work in box four for four? Look, there's a pair of fours in column three, so those two can't be fours. It's not gonna work, because that can't be. Why did it work here and wouldn't work on that cell? Oh, because we've got this one, two pair. That's why it worked here, anyway. We've got that three, so this isn't a three. That three doesn't echo anywhere on the palindrome, but where does three go in this box? It goes somewhere here, aha, but it cannot be on the end of the palindrome because of the three position there. So we rule those out. We've placed three in box one. That does place four. I have a strong feeling we're going to get one, two, three, four sitting around there, but let's try and prove it properly. Right, that can't be three or four now, so that can't be four or five. This can't be six. Could never have been six. Don't know why I pencil marked it as a possible six. Oh, and that's nearly, nearly giving us a useful triple or something, but let's keep going. If one... I don't know. I don't think it did work up here. Three is now going to be in one of those two cells. Remember, there's a three pair there. Um, three there. One of those is a three. Oh, eight has to be on this, this quadruple. So it's now got to be here. Yes, that's on the palindrome. So four must be on the end of the palindrome. Um, so two has to be on that one. Oh, doesn't go anywhere else. That's so surprising. But eight, four, three, one, two. So five in this box has to be 
here because of the five that was given. Then we've got a six, seven, nine triple. This becomes one or eight. It's seeing that six, seven, nine triple and all of these numbers in box one. So that's one or eight, which is here. Now, five has to be in one of these two cells and it can't be there on the palindrome because it can't be there because of that five. So we can put a five in here. Actually, I could have pencil marked five into one of those two cells at the very start. Never spotted that. But we've got a five in the center. Now, what can this be? This is in these positions and it sees four, eight, five, two, and three. No, not that helpful. Um, three, two, four. So we've got to place a three and a four up here along with two. Yes, and they can't be on this end of the palindrome. Perfect. That's it. Because they can't, because we've got four there and three in one of those cells. Those can't be three or four. So given that three and four, three, four form a pair in this box. Now we know where one goes in the box because that can't be on this end of the palindrome. So it can't be there. It can't be there because of those positioned ones. So one is there just as I suspected. Now we must be able to do the same sort of thing again. Four down here. Yes, four there means four is not there. It can't be on the palindrome because four can't go there. So this is a one, four pair and we've placed two in the box. And that one, two, three, four suspicion in the, in the Fisto ring was right. So that's good. Um, now, what does that get done? That can't be a four. So this can't be a five and this can't be a six. Now we've got an eight, nine pair in the final column. That becomes seven. That can't be seven. Sort of scratching around, not quite understanding why I'm finding some things here. That seven or nine, I was tempted to put it there, but it could be a seven here at the moment. Eight, nine, pair, seven. So this is, ah, right, this is three, five or six. It's seeing two, one, four in the box, eight, nine in the column, and seven. So it's three, five, or six, but it can't be five because it's also here. So that's three or six. Oh, seven has to be on this quadruple. So seven's in one of those two cells, looking across at this, which becomes a six. And that looks back at this, which we were just doing. So that becomes a three on the palindrome. These two are not threes. Uh, it hasn't resolved the seven for me. Three there and three here, so a little x-wing on threes has developed. I'm sure there's something a bit more straightforward. Eight now must be in one of those two cells. We've answered the ah, seven in the central box is on one of those two and it can't be there because it would be there on the palindrome. So seven is here. That goes here on the palindrome. Now this is five or six, but it sees a six, so it is five. This is a six, eight, nine triple along the bottom, so that's a seven. This is nine. I love this. This is so symmetrical and frankly clever. Eight, seven, six are a triple there. Now, have I failed to use any of the quadruple clues still? Probably. Yes, six goes in one of those two cells I have. Perfect. So this is an eight, and that fixes nine and six there. Now that is a naked single nine. We get a seven, eight pair. Nine and nine means nine's on the end of this palindrome. And in fact, that's an eight, it also means. So this is a nine, two pair now. And that must be six, and we can put the five in. We've got two nine pair on that end of the palindrome, so two nine there. This has become a one a long time ago, and this is a six. So we finish off this palindrome with six and one. That can't be six. In fact, we can place eight in the box. Finish off seven and nine. That fixes two and nine. 
Oh, we're left with one pair remaining in each of these three boxes. I think we've dealt with all of the quadruple clues. Oh no, this pair is resolved on the palindrome. I was going to say we've dealt with all of the palindromes, and we have now. We've dealt with all of the thermos, so the rest is classic Sudoku. Okay, that's a naked single. Eight, seven and nine next to it. Five, six and seven, none of those are naked singles. That's a one though. So we finish off the one, three, nine. I think this is a search for naked singles, which... Uh, it's obviously one of the ruder things we say. We get an eight there. That is another one. Seven and eight are fixed. One, three, and six. That's a naked six. One and three. Um, we get that fixes the one and four. That three, four is still not fixed, nor the seven, nine. Right, two and four here. Can't do them. Seven and five. That's a naked four. It is all about the nudity, this puzzle. Two and four there. Well, it is towards the end. It was all about the symmetry at the beginning, funnily enough. I mean, very clever. That's become a six. That fixes that pair. Right. Um, let's have a look up and down. Six in this column. There's only one six left to put in the grid. Six, two, eight. Um, that doesn't get it all done. That becomes a naked two. That becomes a four. That becomes a nine. The two has fixed this pair. The four has fixed this pair. And now we've just got columns four and six to finish off. Um, I can't do row one. I must be able to do row two, therefore. I must be able to do both of these rows now. Five and three. Yeah. And back to row one. And there we go. What an excellent puzzle. Um, really interesting how the constraints just rotated around the board. I probably didn't showcase them perfectly, but I think I certainly got the general intended idea that the compiler was going for, which makes a change from yesterday. But uh, as always, Marvin has produced a bit of a gem there, so I hope you gave it a try. That is approachable, but, but very clever. And I'm sure you have to think your way around that puzzle in much the same way. Beautiful work. Uh, thank you so much, as always, for following our videos on YouTube, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.